Well, hello there. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Isaac David and this is The Daily Disciple where I help you follow Jesus daily. Today we're going to get into a little bit of a video reaction. If you're used to the channel, if you've been here a while, you know that Every once in a while, I like to uh, react to these videos on the Jubilee channel. They seem to be pu putting out a lot of interesting content, especially in the realm of Christianity. And today is no different. I'm going to be reacting to the video, Conservative Christians versus Progressive Christians. Man, I'm excited for this, so let's get into it. But first, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon right now, where there are 26 Patreon supporters, and it is through your support that I'm able to continue to do everything I do on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and sharing the gospel and helping people follow Jesus daily. So thank you so much for that. And if you want to help support me on Patreon, head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple, and you can partner with me. Link in bio. Now, on to the video. It says in Romans that if you confess with the mouth and believe in the heart that Jesus is Lord, then you will surely be saved. Praying, reading your Bible. I think following the commandments is a minimum. Someone who tries to reflect God's love in their lives. Welcoming people to love each other and be compassionate and listen is essentially what Jesus asked us to do. What makes a good Christian? This is a terrible question to start us off with because one of the fundamental things about Christianity is that no one is good. No, not one, no one seeks for God, no one does what is right. That's a key element because if we were good, if we could be good Christians, we wouldn't need God. But we can't be. We can't be. We're all sinful and that's why we need Jesus. And so I kind of know what they're getting at, but at the same time, like, hey, let's be careful here. We can't be good people. Uh, we need Jesus. That's why we need him. And once we are Christians, man, it's not our goodness that keeps us there. It's not our goodness that gets us to heaven. That's not what it's about. Yes, now we're we're following in this process of sanctification by which God is moving us closer to himself. But that's not what saves us. It was Jesus on the cross that paid for our sins, that brought us back into right relationship with God. When we're approaching different topics like homosexuality or like pro-choice, pro-life, we have to go into them thinking about what the Bible says. They would prefer to have the world or society or culture or their peers dictate their life. There are rules that are associated uh, with being progressive. The problem comes in when people try to create unnecessary boundaries. Okay, so right off the bat, he's talking about unnecessary boundaries. Based on my experience, I mean, he doesn't have give a lot of context to what he's saying there, but progressive Christians often talk about unnecessary boundaries that the Bible puts, or conservative Christians put around being a Christian. They're saying, hey, you can be, you know, you can be trans, you can be gay, you can be um, whatever, you can be, you know, a communist, you can be whatever that, you know, and we can all be Christians and we could all, you know, worship the same God. I think that might be what he's getting at when he's talking about unnecessary boundaries, but we'll see if he fleshes it out anymore. I'm Angel, I'm a worship leader, and I'm excited to be here. Hi, I'm Jason. I'm the YouTuber known as Pastor Jason Answers, and I'm happy to be here. I'm Ciara, um, I do hair and I work with children. Hi, I'm Olivia, I'm a college student. Hello, my name is Kurt, and I am a senior pastor. I am Brenda, I am the YouTuber known as God is Grey, and I'm so excited to have a civilized conversation with you all. Okay, so I don't know any of these other people, but I do know God is Grey, and uh, she's gotten herself in a number, a uh, little bit of controversy with other popular Christian YouTubers. I wouldn't call God is Grey a Christian YouTuber, she's some uh, something other than a Christian, that's for sure, but she gets herself into lots of drama with other Christian YouTubers, if you guys know Paul and Morgan, or uh, Girl Defined. Um, there's been a lot of controversy around her, a girl, um, around a God is Grey YouTube videos because she is extremely um, not biblical at all in terms of uh, most of the things she says. She just pretty much says what she, you know, wants the Bible to say. And then when the Bible doesn't align, she changes it. And so I'm, and also a little piece of advice for you guys. When somebody goes into a situation and say, I'm just happy to have a civilized conversation with, you know, you know, it's going to get a little bit weird because 
what else would this be? Like, you're just sitting down having a conversation. Somebody's already coming in a little bit, I don't know, feeling a little bit hostile. I don't know. We'll see. LGBTQ plus couples should be allowed to get married in the church. <laughs> Personally, I think they should be able to because they can have a marriage that glorifies God just like any straight couples can. Okay, y'all, what? What did she just say? She said that she thinks that gay couples can glorify God in the same way that straight couples can. Okay, uh, verse, please. Like, are we just out here just saying random stuff? Like, this is the whole thing. <laughs> People, people can speak for God, okay? That's the whole thing. Like, people are speaking for God, and nobody is showing their foundation, their standard. What are we, wh where is, has God actually spoken? And he has spoken in his word. And if we're going to abandon his word, then you're just saying stuff. Man, like, okay, an atheist, right? Or like an agnostic or somebody from another religion, like, sure, just say whatever you want. You know, you have no standard or you have your, whatever. Just, that's fine. But if you're going to claim to be a Christian and you're going to say just stuff about God and you're not going to have any foundation or standard for which you say that is actually true, then I, I can't give that any credibility at all. And this other lady, like she's saying, I think it's a sin. And yet I think we should also support people being able to have the same rights we have in the church. And I'm like, guys, if this is a sin, how is it loving to affirm this within the context of the church, right? Like that's not love, that's actually hate. If, if you saw your friend doing something that was harming them and that was against what God wanted for them, and yet you, you think loving is to help them, affirm them, enable them to continue on that path, Man, that's not loving at all, that's hate. When I was deep in evangelicalism, the narrative was being gay is a sin. And then I saw the church sort of like soften up or change the narrative to, okay, being gay isn't a sin, God made you gay, but you can never act on homosexuality. That's the sin, the act. But again, I don't see the harm. I see beautiful couples like this gentleman here. So when we look at suicidal ideation, we look at trans women being murdered because of the bigotry in this nation, a lot propagated by Christians, evangelicals, conservatives. The fruit of that doctrine we've been planting for not only decades, but centuries. Did she just accuse evangelicals of killing trans people? What? Oh my goodness, Kay, th where do we even start here? Where do we even start? Number one, I wanna make this clear. If you're watching this video, you're not a Christian. You see me and you're like, wow, this guy's just, man, he, he, he hates people and he's just like, no, that's not the truth at all, right? I love you, right? Whether you're a Christian, whether you're non-Christian, what, whatever, right? <laughs> I, I do, and this is part of the reason I wanna make this video. Because look, she says, God is great. She says, oh, uh, you know, I think I don't see any harm in it. I see beautiful couples here and there and that kind of thing. According to your standard, Brenda, I think that's your name. You say, okay, I see no harm in, in, you know, gay marriage or, you know, couples, same sex couples, all that kind of thing. But once again, we're, we're straying from the Bible. We're straying from, from the Bible. And I think ultimately what we're going to see is that the difference between a quote unquote conservative Christian, which man, guys, you're either a Christian or you're not, but just to use their labels, a conservative Christian, a progressive Christian, is that somebody that is standing on the word of God as their foundation, they're, they are seen as conservative Christians, and, and those who are abandoning it for the sake of um, cultural integration, are are you know show themselves as progressive i we don't we don't believe all that bigotry all that other stuff and it blows my mind when somebody like brenda can say that it is because of the evangelical thought that 
homosexuality is wrong and uh and also that you know men are men and women are women that this is causing suicides within the trans community like number one correlation does not mean causation we let's get that on the just the straight up that's just logic 101 secondly this is terrible argumentation in terms of somebody has a belief and then you say that belief is leading to all this evil stuff and you have no backing to say that that's actually true regardless if people look i imagine that the biblical truth that you know that the marriage is between one man and one uh, one woman and that genders are created by god and we can't just change them whenever we want to i imagine that can make some people upset i'm not oblivious to that fact i actually know that's true because i've talked about this before and people have gotten very very upset right and i'm not even and i'm willing to even willing to even say that this may hurt them mentally their heart they may they may be hurt right but now we're getting to the point of what is more loving to do is it more loving to lie to people like brenda like for brenda to say hey you know what we just you know we we want to just love you and we want to affirm you and we want to do this just lie to them say it's okay or speak the truth to them knowing that it will hurt knowing that it may even hurt their feelings but knowing that <laughs> that this is the only path forward towards living a life that is God glorifying. And look, I'm not saying that you do this in such a way where you're like, <laughs> you're saying, God hates you, going to hell, all that stuff. No, right? I'm more in favor of sitting down with somebody that you have a relationship with and just laying it out for them. Um, this isn't even the best context to do that. I'm not even saying that YouTube is the best context to lay all that out. It's a platform that we have. We use it to the best we can. But ultimately, man, sitting down with having a conversation with somebody, sharing the truth with them in love, that is the best. But don't compromise the truth and don't say that the truth is leading to all this crap when you have no evidence for that. There's a verse that mentions all of the people who won't enter the kingdom of heaven. And I can talk about what Leviticus says about homosexuality or the people who engage in that. But I just base off as Christians, if our goal is to get to heaven. So I'll let her finish, but just to clarify, I, I don't think your goal, your main goal should be just going to heaven. I think it should be to have a reconciled relationship with God. That is um, where our life should stem from. It's having that relationship with God. If it's just about going to heaven, man, like, how small is life then? Because you're just like, well, this life is pretty much, you know, it's whatever it is because I'm just waiting for heaven. No, God has something for us today. And that begins when we uh, repent for our sins and trust in Jesus and has that we have that uh, reconciliation with God through Jesus. Then we can follow our purpose, what God has called us to today, here and now, even before we go to heaven. I know that if I'm a drunk, I know if I'm a fornicator, I know if I'm an adulterer, if I'm homo living a homosexual lifestyle, I will not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's what the Bible says. The word homosexuality is not even entered into biblical texts until probably like the 1900s. In the original okay. text, Arsenikoitai and Malakoi are in our English rendition, Correct. it says homosexuality, but those literally translate to pedophilia. <laughs> okay, number one, I, he, I, I know he's about to drop something, but just his face, that guy's face, he's like, it's like, that should totally be a meme. Like, this is a great meme template. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it really is. Okay, let's see what he has to say. It's a relationship between an older man and his young son. So the verses that say, a man shall not sleep with another man, for it is an abomination that... There's no word for homosexuality in that. It's just no dude sleep with other dude. That was a mic drop if I've ever heard one. But it's not just about guys like... <laughs> It's not just about the big mic drop moments, right? Like these are people we're talking about. These are real situations. Um, it's not just about winning an argument, even though that dude obviously won that argument. Um, it's clear in the Bible. We don't need to argue that anymore. Like it's so clear. Every time we go back to this back and forth, back and forth, it's like, okay, we find out our decision is either believe the Bible, obey the Bible, or don't. Like, that's what it comes to with a lot of these things. Like, I find within my own life, when I start trying to justify things or, you know, try to work around or, you know, God doesn't really care about that. Like, it comes to the point where I either need to believe what God says and what believe what he says is sin is sin or, 
go on my own way and do what I want. And that's the decision that every person needs to make. I, I can see how you can see that relating to First Timothy passage. But if you look at Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, it's clearly in context, it's talking about quote unquote unnatural relations. It doesn't say homosexual, but it's talking about men having committing acts with other men. Yeah, well, the, the problem with that is that, so in Romans, that's Paul writing. Right. Um, and so Paul. That's God writing. Yes. No, it's Paul writing. No, it's, it's God. So, so, well, that's a whole nother <laughs> thing. Yeah. Wow. wow. You have these conversations. I think this is why these conversations are so good because you actually see um, when when people are consistent with their with their worldview and with actually what they believe and are open and honest about it. Like it gives you a proper perspective of, of actually where these two kind of groups and how far apart they are. Like where they're having this conversation about something that's in the Bible, and then somebody that multiple people that say they're Christians start saying. Well, that's Paul that said that. That's Paul. That's not God. That's just Paul. And so you see here the breakdown of the authority of Scripture and how that could lead to so much confusion and honestly so much division within what is called the, the Christian church. Because there are some that see some of the Bible as not as authoritative or not authoritative at all and, and other parts of the Bible authoritative. And so, man, there's just a divide here. The Bible is God's word to us. It is infallible, inerrant, inspired. And yes, it was written down by men, but God, in his providence, in his sovereignty, saw fit that men would write it down and that it would be inspired, the words of God, to us today. And so we're able to read the Bible and we're able to look at what God has for us today and know that it is, it is not corrupted, it is not changed because there's been so many translations. No, that's not the facts at all. And if somebody's telling you that, if somebody's saying that to you, um, man, they're just trying to say that so then you lose your standard. So then you, you're brought back down to the level where it's just all speculation, all uh, uncertainty. But thank God that we don't have to stay in uncertainty, in confusion, in cloudy clutter, but we can have clarity knowing exactly what God has said to us. There are dividing things in the Bible and progressives want to get rid of that because they want to focus on God loves you, accepts you, and puts his arms around you. But in the process have also watered down the gospel, also uh, deleted some things that they know what the Bible says, and because we don't want to cast people away. Mm. So I, I love that heart, but I think in the process of watering down the gospel, you set the bar so low that do they even see the real God? That is a really good word. You see, we have here two things, truth and love, truth and love. And, and often when one of these things is overemphasized or, or just uh, like clung on to in a, in a distorted way, then we get into trouble. And you see a lot when heavily progressive people cling on to the, this idea of love and it's an incomplete version of love because it's not the biblical idea of love, but it is a distorted view of love that says that truth needs to be excluded and acceptance and, uh, and, and affirmation need to be the highest values. And so that is the ultimate good. It's affirmation, it is acceptance, regardless of whether that is conducive to what God wants for us or, or God's best for us. That's not the most important point. And then there's other groups that kind of cling on to this distorted view of, of truth, which is a truth that has no regard for the other person or care for the other person. It is just kind of bombastic and you know what we're gonna say the truth regardless of it you know hurts your feelings we don't care all that kind of thing and so we have these two these two things that both co-mingle uh, because God is both truth and love and that is what he's telling us today to embrace it is not just bombastic truth without a care for the other person and it's not just um, blind acceptance but it is both um, but it is both care for the other person, but also speaking what is true and what is right and what is good. And when these things come together, man, it is beautiful. And I think that last part that that guy said when he talks about, you know, you get into this place where you almost lose the true God. And when we fall into either one of these ditches, you lose sight of who God really is and what God is really 
like and, and you create an idol for yourself. And so part of what I, why I wanted to react and respond to these videos is because I want you guys to kind of t take a look at your own life and see if you're creating an, an idol out of, out of, you know, in your own life. Are you dismissing some things in the Bible because they don't fit into your, your life? Um, and man, if that's the case, repent, you know, let go of those things, turn back to God in faith, and he will warmly receive you in his love. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we got a part two coming, so I'm so pumped. There's going to be a part two for sure. This video is not over, and there's plenty more stuff to talk about. So I'll see you next week, but God bless, and I'll see you later.